actually ring, okay? Your phone will actually ring every, like, and for you to find it. It's so amazing. All right, so I was talking, and so my production team just came because I came without them. So y'all ain't hear nothing I said. Okay, let me say it again. Yesterday, I had an experience with none other than Beyonce Daddy, and I still haven't had my coffee. Y'all see, I'm losing my voice. I'm cutting flowers over here, but I'm trying to give y'all some time to get here because if you miss this live, okay, you will get a chance to get this again because I am coming back live because ain't nobody got time for the devil. The devil made me lose my phone this morning and made me misplace my phone. So let me take it from the top as if, you know, I know y'all didn't know what I was saying before. Listen, I misplaced my phone and, you know, dropping my kids off and I used the app that I was just telling y'all about, Google my phone, found the phone. OK, because what I got to tell y'all and these nuggets that I have to share with you, you got you li listen, you got to grab your tea, got to grab your coffee, whatever you drink in the morning and sit here with me for a few minutes. Now, while all that is going on, I'm going to try to put up this video that I have in here for y'all real quick. Because I got to tell y'all about the experience over the last two days. Over the last two days, and I want to shout out to my hot seat sisters from my mastermind. Y'all know who y'all are. Thank you for getting me all the way together, okay? Because my daddy named me Spicia. And I went to school and after all of this, have called myself the accountant. Now they have said, no. You the finance coach. Because the way I was pulling them numbers together, they thought I had some kind of number magic. But anyway, I say that I am. Let me re allow me to reintroduce myself. Spicita Jackson, for those of you who catch me for the first time, and like, who's this girl jumping up in my feed and in my live? I talk to entrepreneurs, wealth producers, money makers, you high performing entrepreneurs, which is what I learned about today. Help you, helping you guys, you know, build wealth through business, minding your own business and minding your money. I am the accountant, the finance coach. I help you get your business fit so that you can be financed and find and you can leverage OPM or OPP. We also call that other people's money. All right. No, I haven't uploaded. Y'all give me one second. I'm going to grab my coffee and I'm going to upload a picture and a logo because I'm going to do this again tomorrow. I just didn't want to miss the opportunity to talk to y'all this morning because I felt like me losing my phone and all that stuff, I felt like it was really one of those things that was preventing me, trying to stop me from getting here to give you guys this nugget, these nuggets. Well, I'm only give y'all one today that I got to give y'all, okay? Um, give, give me one second. Grab your coffee. Ask me some. If you in the chat, talk to me in the chat. Say, hey, let me check this chat. Is the chat here? That's me and my friends. Hold on, y'all. Let me see. See, it's a chat here. Hello. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. If you in, if you here, wherever you from, say hey to me, y'all. Let me say good morning. If you're watching this live, say good morning. Okay. For those of you who don't know, I do this every Friday, 9 a.m. ish. It's called Business Combos and Coffee, and it converts to my podcast, my blog. It's called Wealthy Habits. You can find it if you go to accountantthisway.com. But listen, y'all, let me give me some coffee real quick. Yeah, I'm not going to take a lot of time because I do fast when I drink coffee, okay? Y'all give me one second. Give me one second. Don't judge me. I'm going to pick the kind I'm drinking this morning. I'm just going to run it and drink it. And if any of y'all know Nespresso out there, and y'all know how to get me an endorsement, because you know you have not because you asked not, I'm going to need an endorsement because I love these Nespresso pods. Nespresso need to be sending me some, some, some something. So I can make this thing better for y'all. If anybody know, send me a DM. Send me a DM. Oh, my anniversary. I got these beautiful flowers. Y'all see these flowers right here? I was cutting flowers because I was trying to get these kids to school, get, get to y'all real quick. Let me drop my flowers in here. My hubby bought me some flowers for our ninth wedding anniversary. <clears throat> y'all grab y'all tea because I got tea for you. I'm making a little bit of a mess. 
for y'all today. Let me see. Get the, let me get a get. Let me show y'all proof that the proof is in the pudding. What was I doing yesterday? Let me show y'all. Let me show y'all because nobody. I, I I see some hello, hi hellos, hi hellos in the in the chat. Hold on one second, y'all. Give me some graphics up in here. So we do this show live every Friday. Um, I do it with my amazing team. Shout out to Laura for always being here, making sure that, that I got some sound and I might not have, I hit thinking I'm cute and y'all are like, baby, you ain't got no sound. Nobody, nobody can hear you. Okay. Throw some stuff up in here because I ain't give Laura nothing. I jumped on this live. So, all right. So I've been going through all this content i have because i'm not able to get to it and share it with y'all until tomorrow i'm gonna need until tomorrow because i've been out of my office for two days and so and i believe in pouring in yourself okay let me say that pouring in yourself being in the room with people who probably experienced some of the same struggles as you and so i joined a mastermind four years ago i did it scared y'all because i was like this is a lot of money i don't know if it's worth it i've gone from being in every meeting to being in none because i'm over here trying to do what i do what i do what i do and so but one of the things i've always remained consistent with is being in the room okay and we have this thing that we say that the conversation is different when you sit with winners the conversation is different sometimes when you actually y'all make it in the room and i was in the room with beyonce daddy and y'all know i had plenty of questions for him because y'all know you know he produced beyonce so I had some questions about him for him, but I didn't get up and ask no questions because I told y'all I was in the room with some amazing entrepreneurs and they asked all the questions that I was thinking. I didn't even have to get up, baby. See, when you hang out with real smart people, they make your job easier. And so shout out to my mastermind crew. Y'all, thank you for allowing me to be a part of this experience and to share the room with you. Shout out to Lamar and Ronnie Tyler for creating this space. Thank you guys for always supporting me, um, being a part of what I do and what I'm doing. Thank you guys. Okay. Listen, y'all, if it wasn't for them and them always say, okay, what, what can we do to wow a room full of overachievers? And they always deliver for me. Okay. Last time I met the author of the 12 week year, Mr. Brian Moran, who is now one of my coaches. Okay. I also met, you know, you know, the author of Profit First. You know that Profit First that y'all like to talk about? I'm gonna try to get I got I got a I got a friend, a celebrity friend. I'm not gonna announce who she is, but she is like on this profit first thing, right? And so she wants me to have a conversation with her about money and using profit first. And I know a lot of other entrepreneurs that use it. And I have my own thoughts about it. You know, shout out to, you know, sh shout out to the author because, you know, he's my friend too. And I say he's my bestie in my head. Y'all saw the post a long time ago. But the thing is, is that sometimes people aren't ready to use profit first because they got no profit or they're struggling to maintain profit. And one of the clips that I hope to show y'all tomorrow is how Mr. No talked about even now in business, because, you know, what y'all don't know and what I learned yesterday, let me get try to get this lighting right. Is the lighting better here? Laura, is it better? Okay, listen. Yes, 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 yes. Let me, let me take a sip of my coffee. Mm -mm before i give y'all this listen what y'all don't know about um beyonce daddy mr knows uncle uncle matthew is that and i discovered yesterday he was a millionaire before beyonce became beyonce when Beyonce was three years old, he and his wife, Miss Tina Knowles, had a, had a business. They actually had a hair business um, that was grossing a million dollars. Y'all, y'all got to show up tomorrow for, for, to find out what he did with this business, which is what wealthy people do. Okay? Wealthy people do things from their excess. Wealth is having ex excess. And one of those things that I thought about, and as I was thinking about my moment yesterday, 
was the Lord's Prayer. Yep, the Lord's Prayer. And in the Lord's Prayer, it says, my cup runneth over. But first of all, it starts with the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Want. Let me say that. Let me get my Jacksonville out for y'all. Want. That's W-A-N-T. I shall not want. That means you don't need nothing. Wealth is when you need no more money. You shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. They green, baby. They ain't dusty. They ain't brown. Green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. The still waters is peace. He restores my soul. Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? That's COVID. That's all this crazy stuff I hear, y'all. That sickness, that, that's, that's death, that's dangers that we face. Yea, do you walk through that? You shall feel no evil because God is with you. His rod and his staff, it comforts you. That's protection in the presence of my enemies. He anoints our head with oil. That's blessing and favor. That's grace and mercy following you everywhere you go. Your cup runneth over. Okay, baby, goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life and you shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Okay, I know I paraphrased it at the end, but I just wanted to let y'all know that the Lord's Prayer talk about the wealth. And I was thinking about that and reminiscing on that because you guys know that wealth is my talk. Wealth is my thing. I am the accountant. Okay, I am the finance coach. Okay, I help you leverage it. I, even if you don't have it, it's not always about money and how much money you got in the bag. Wealth is. Wealth is. Okay? Sometimes wealth is just simply access. And yesterday, I had access. Right? And so what I learned, what he said was, and I'm going to play the clip for y'all later. Because I believe in receipts and social proof. He said that he still has to worry about cash flow. He still monitors cash flow. It may not be word. We'll get the exact word. But he said he ain't got to worry about payroll no more because he know he make enough money for payroll. And many of us are like that in business, right? I know I make enough money to cover my payroll and cover my people and to pay my bills, right? But how many of you know that business is more than about paying your bills and replacing your salary. And if that's all you're in business for and that's all you're in business doing, y'all check me out. I want to help you. Because that is you replacing your job. And that's what my husband, I mean, my, my grandfather has said to me, he said, baby, congratulations. You know, so I had got this big office in Camp Creek Parkway here in Atlanta. It's one of the busiest um, um, shopping plazas here in Atlanta. And, and um, I went into it and I did it scared. And so just like I said, I did this scared. I've done a lot of things, you know, that I was uneasy about. But I knew, right? I knew the Lord's prayer, even though I wasn't thinking it at that time. I knew that the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. And when I and when I went into that situation, I was like, God, I'm going to do this. I know I, you telling me to do it. But if I fail, God, you are going to look bad. I'll never forget. I was setting it. They call it a white box, but mine wasn't a white box. I was blessed. I was in K Camp Creek. You guys, anybody know Camp Creek has like the number one or number two Publix in the state of Georgia. They have the number one Fridays and all these major restaurant brands in Georgia come right to here because it's right next to the airport. I'm right next to the airport. Our business, Tax Plus 365 X Financial, EX Financial CPA, we're right next to the airport too. But back then, I was moving to the retail front and the rent was something I wasn't comfortable with. And I didn't have all these clients. Right. And I actually didn't have the cash flow flowing currently on that day in my business to sustain the expenses that I knew were to come. OK, but that didn't stop me. Because I knew that business was a numbers game. Let me say that again. When you know 
that business is a numbers game and business is wealth, your business can be an ATM. Let me say that again. So even though I was in a space and I knew my business didn't have the cash flow to cover the rent and the overhead that would have come with moving in that location, I did it and I did it anyway because I knew that business was a numbers game. Okay? And the and 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 I paralleled that thought parallels with what I heard Matthew Knowles say. He talked about the importance of financials, understanding financials and numbers. And even though his son-in-law is a billionaire, his wife is a billionaire, millionaire, and his grandbaby, who six or seven years old, however old she is right now, she's a brand and a billion and a millionaire. Matthew Knowles said, hey, I don't worry about payroll, but I manage my cash flow and I manage my numbers. Now, I'm going to show y'all a clip on exactly what he said, but what I learned was you're never too wealthy to mind your wealth. And the second thing that I learned from him was that wealth gives versus receive. Wealth gives versus receive. So I lived in New York. I'm an accountant. And I moved to New York to work for a publishing um, accounting firm while I was sitting for the CPA exam. You know, I should have been sitting and I should have been studying for the exam. But something in me, you know, I've always loved to write. And I majored in accounting because my mama told me that, you know, we don't have a lot of money. So you need to go to school and major in something that when you get out of school, you're not getting out of school to figure it out. You need to get out of school and know what your job gonna be and have a job. Therefore, I majored in accounting because it was the hardest thing in the business school. And I knew that if I could do that, I could do everything in business. And I knew that business was my calling. Fast forward, I'm studying for the CPA exam. And I had this same thought that I wanted to leave Tallahassee, Florida, a place where I was comfortable. I was known. I was a student leader and, you know, I had access, which was wealth, which I didn't even know at the time. And I looked up and I had this thought that if I could make it in New York, if I could make it there, I can make it anywhere. And so I'm looking at jobs on monster.com at the time. And um, I saw a job for a publishing accounting firm that actually at that time, I didn't know what it was, but they, they actually um, advanced publications, new house. Um, they actually was an accounting firm or is the accounting firm for the new house family, like the wealthiest, you know, some rich people. And so they had a whole accounting firm. And I moved to New York. I went to New York to interview with this firm. I didn't know what I was going for. It was kind of like a, it was an ad. Had no ticket, had nothing. But when the job was posted, I called the lady on the phone because it was in publishing and it was an audit position and I was an auditor at the time, but I knew I wanted to write and Love Jones was out. So I, in my head, I said, I'm gonna do, poor, I write poetry. I'm gonna write my poetry, I'm gonna do Love Jones at night. And from there, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna be an auditor by day and a writer by night. Fast forward, call the lady and I said, I'm gonna be in New York this week and I see this position. Is it okay if you would interview me? She said, absolutely. Send me your resume. She, I, I sent her my resume. She told me, absolutely. I go to New York. I get the job on the spot. But in between that, y'all, I had no ticket. I had no intention. I had no money to get to New York. Um, but I had a will. And where there's a will, there's a way. And so I go to New York. I get the job on the spot. But I'm supposed to be sitting for the CPA exam. Y'all remember? So I sit, I, I, I go back to work, I sit for the CPAs and needless to say, I had to take it again from that time, y'all, because I wasn't focused. I was focused on moving and getting to New York and, and following the gunction and the unction in my heart. So anyway, I a couple of months later, they held the job for me. I moved to New York and um, I, I'm able to like, you know, what I call make it there, give myself a chance to move to New York. 
to make it there and to have what I consider was an experience of a lifetime. And as I tell y'all this story, because it's a part of my story, I say, well, Spicy, to where are you going with this? I'm going with it. I'm saying that wealth is opportunity sometimes. I had the opportunity to live in New York and to be who I wanted to be. And because I had that opportunity, it propelled me um, to be um, a merchant and acquisitions accountant. I moved from New York to Atlanta, which is where I now live. And um, I work for a big four accounting firm in New York, moved here to Atlanta. They relocated me. And fast forward from there, I went through my journey as an accountant and ended up as an entrepreneur. And that's where I was. I'm sitting on the floor. I'm back. I'm sitting on the floor in Camp Creek in this retail location. And I told God that I knew I had no customers. I didn't have enough, I didn't have the cash flow, but I had a will and I had a desire. And I knew that in business, it's a numbers game. And so I worked the numbers and I worked my marketing and I worked my team to make sure I was able to service those people. And I made it. I made it from that location to purchasing a building to being in our own location to where we are now and where I am now with you guys. Being able to share my journey as an entrepreneur. And I am so grateful that I had the experience of hearing Matthew Uncle Matthew, Mr. Knowles, Beyonce Daddy, talk about how he built businesses, how he gave. And on that day, on yesterday, he gave a bunch of wealth to people like me. That I'm taking it out of the room and I'm bringing it here for you guys. And he talked about cash flow. And how today, with his billionaire family, he still minds his cash flow. And who are we? We don't have as much as Matthew knows some of us, right? Who are we to say that we're too busy to mind our money? So what I have coming for you guys, and I'm not ready yet to announce it, but I'm going to give you guys here because I appreciate you guys joining me here live today and every week. But share this with your friends. And the platform has shifted a little bit and it'll continue to shift. I am still on my series about celebrity um, financial mistakes that celebrities make. And one of the, fine, the, the mistakes that Mr. Knowles said that he made was, I believe, that he didn't say any of these exact words, was pride. He believes that he lost his family due to pride. Right. He he talks about, you know, his former wife, Miss Tina Knowles, and how they're friends and, you know, his current wife there, Tina and Gina, they, they names match and how, you know, they're, they're friends. They, they get along. It's good. Right. But he told us about all the journeys. It's too much for me to tell y'all because I'm approaching 30 minutes, but I'm going to dissect this series down. Much like I talked about that, Joe. No, I'm not done with that, Joe. But this is like the opposite of end of the spectrum. We have two celebrities. One, Mr. Miss Fat Joe, where he said, you know, he was busy making money. And, you know, the accountant did him wrong. Mr. Knowles, he, 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 he talked about the value and the importance of having a strong accountant and a good CPA, right? Having a good attorney. Who do you need on your team to protect your wealth? He didn't go into the details of it, but you could tell he valued it because he he touched on it several times. And his conversation was not that he was not there to talk about accounting. He was not there to talk about um, keeping your numbers right. But I felt like he was there so that I could come and deliver this to you guys. Share this with your friends. Follow me across all social media platforms. I just joined TikTok this week. Look for me, Spicy to Jackson, on TikTok. 
share it with your friends. I'll be doing my one minute clips, dropping those in guys, but it is important to know. And let me show y'all some proof before I get up. You know, this is, this is the room that I was in. Can I show it? Is it showing? Did I not do it right, Laura? What did I do wrong? Let me see. Do I make so that that is me being and that is Mr. Knowles where I was yesterday. And I think I I'm, the way I put it in, you guys can't really see it. Um let me see. How do I do that? I want to make sure that y'all can see it. Forgive me for having to put some of this stuff up while I'm talking to y'all, but you guys don't understand. I just, I was like, look, I, I got to get this, this information to y'all. We got to have a family talk this morning. Let me make sure I can show this to y'all one more time. And so before Mr. Knowles came up, I was actually able to like hear other entrepreneurs. I have a, a, a good friend of mine, college um, college friend who rocked the room. Shout out to Mr. Andy Henriquez, um, master storyteller, um, uh, former CPA, and you know, uh, a, a dynamic coach, dynamic. Uh, man of God, dynamic husband and father. Uh, shout out to his wife, Kaz. Hey, Coach Kaz. They are a beautiful couple. And yesterday, my friend Andy, Andy, I'm proud to call you my friend. You did an awesome job, Andy. I did your quiz, Andy. And y'all, I hope I made Andy proud by being able to, and Andy proud. Why did she put that picture? That's what I uploaded, Andy. Okay. Um, I, I'm happy. I hope I made you proud, Andy. Um, and I, you guys join me tomorrow. Join me throughout this series. If you miss me going live, because I'll probably be dropping some live nuggets and some and some pre-recorded, but I gotta get this out and I gotta share this with you guys so that you too can build wealth through business, lower your taxes so you can reinvest your profit back into your own business. Build great humans, build true wealth, which is the wealth that you build inside your children. Okay, you guys join me for wealthy habits so that you can have the wealth that God desired for you to have beyond money, beyond anything that man can see. All right, y'all, I'm Spicy to Jackson. I'm about to lose my voice. I love y'all. Until next time, y'all, share this with your friends. Share this with your business besties. Share this, share this, share this. All right, I'll see y'all later. Bye. The profit you want, the tax bill you want, and the freedom you want will be fueled by you reinvesting your profits back in your business. That's exactly why. Could be you a got, deacon. You got a business church. We go, hey, get your business saved. Come to Tax Plus X Financial. We can get you saved today. All you need to do is click you the button. To and, we, <laughs> and we'll get you well on your way. Come to Cedar, come to Cedar, come to Cedar right now. We can fix your broken business and show you how. Business church, take your business to church. Get it saved, baby, get it saved.